So if you guys don't mind, I'll facilitate the meeting if, if, uh, if that's okay. And so I was just thinking maybe if James gave a bit of an intro about what he's about and what he's doing and what he wants to do, and then uh, pass it over to you, Casey, to sort of uh, fill in sort of what you're doing and uh, where your specialties are, then maybe go back to James to see where, where some detail of connection comes in. Is that cool with everybody? Yep. Sounds okay, great. so take it away, James. Hey, my name is James. Good to meet you, bud. Thanks for taking the time. <clears throat> I'm just going to run you through a quick promo I have on my website just to kind of give you a rough idea. Um, the vision of Mother Hands is simple. We want to provide healthy, affordable, local grown food to meet the needs of low income families in remote communities across the country. We strive to create a way to ensure food security to feed our families healthy, locally grown foods right where they live, no matter where or how remote. By utilizing current technologies, working with First Nations communities and partnering with key industry leaders, we can and we will achieve this goal. So the idea here is it's, uh, it's called, <clears throat> I had the name Mother's Hands. It's a vertical farming initiative. Basically what I wanted to do is to build a facility on as many reserves around Canada as possible to start with Vancouver Island and expand beyond. The idea here is that there's a structure that I've set up where um, each farm's profits largely go to the community the farm is in and to the upgrade the technologies and uh, improve the technologies within the greenhouse. And then part of it goes into a pool, a pot. When that pot gets big enough, then without having to seek outside investment or anything else, and using our existing partnerships, we take what we've saved and we open up another greenhouse on another reserve. Now you have two greenhouses working in the same structure, the pots now getting income sources from two of the vertical farms. And so if it took you say a year and a half or three years to get enough money to get two, a year and a half gets you three, seven months gets you four, three and a half gets you five. You know what I mean? It starts to get this potential for geometric growth. And so then we're just moving experts from one reserve to the other and teaching that nation how to grow and take care of their facilities and to, to meet the quotas and everything else. And it creates potentials for a logistics company uh, to ship all the food to the market and everything else. It creates an opportunity for grocery stores to come in and, uh, or partnering with com uh, com companies like um, co-op foods, for instance, who have a lot of good solid relationships with grocery chains throughout Canada, most of them in remote communities. So by getting them to sell our product and uh, similar to with tobacco or gas, if you have your status card, you get access to a lower, um, uh, it's just an idea popped in my head just now, but in some way in which the First Nations community could afford the food, but to make the money, the company is going to sell part of its yield under a different name to to the market uh, for a higher dollar value, because especially uh, from my research, local is the new organic. And just by saying local, uh, a lot of people are more uh, willing to kind of invest their, their money into that. So basically, I want to be able to make my money off selling part of my yield to the open market. And I want to be able to take those profits and instead of lining the pockets, pockets of everyone on board, everyone on board agrees to pass that those that money on down to lower our food cost for the other half of our yield. So if, for instance, up in Nanavut and stuff ahead of Romaine, if you can get one is probably around 10, $12 a head, where, you know, the GMO stuff, well, that's cheap, but the organic Romaine, that's, that's a daunting price. So if you can bring that healthy food to those local communities at a much reduced price, then that's kind of like what I, what I'm looking at doing. So overall, it's just starting with one facility. I'm looking to par partner with either Songhees or the Malahat First Nations here in Vancouver Island. And uh, basically getting them to build the, the, the building. And then I get the funding together to put the facilities up and get whatever consultants and experts I need to, to get things flowing, right? So that's my little rundown. <laughs> Fantastic. It's totally in alignment too. <laughs> That's awesome. Perfect. Yeah, Elijah spoke highly of you and, and uh, I, I was looking forward. I knew people get busy and things happen. So, you know, I'm pretty open and 
whatnot. And I'm glad that you did take the time and find the time. So thank you. Yeah. So you guys know Clint pretty well. Yeah. I do. You know Clint. Okay, great. Yeah. Clint, Clint helped me build the pyramid at Burning Man a couple of times. Or well, he, I did it with him the first year and then he continued building it. Um, and that's kind of like a big part of it is building these big greenhouse pyramids because it's, it's basically a gigantic greenhouse. Mm -hmm. um, so I specialize in uh, uh, geodesic framing. So I do, I've been doing domes for many years and for the last eight years I've been doing pyramids. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm getting into like square houses and hexagon houses, just kind of more traditional things. But I do kind of the whole spectrum of it. And then all of them can become uh, really nice greenhouses that can retain the warmth, especially when you're in Canada, because I know it's really cold up there. Mm -hmm. You got like plan for radiant heat flooring, you got to plan for the sun coming in and heating and like just kind of keeping it all contained. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I know all that stuff's important. And then um, <clears throat> I invented a, an aquaponic system uh, that is a, a vertical tower system. I don't uh, know if I had a lot of it on this computer that I could show. Oh, I, I think I do. Is, is there a way I could share my screen? Yeah, this way, so. Uh, okay, you can share it out. So. Have you guys seen the pyramid that I made at Burning Man with Clint? I think I did. I think he showed me. Here, I'll just uh, play that while I'm looking for the other video. I did not. So, let's see here. Oh my goodness. So yeah, this is the pyramid I built at Burning Man. Or this is like the show. This is it being built. So you build your pyramids using triangles and just setting up pyramids upon pyramids, inverted and, and upright, stack them together to make the pyramid. Pretty much, yeah. It's, an, it's called an octahedral truss. Yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah, this is kind of a slow version of it. Did you ever, uh, you ever you've heard of Buckmeister Fuller? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you ever read his book, Spaceship Earth? Um, I think I have that book. Uh, really I, I read it all the way, but yeah, I get into it a lot. Yeah, yeah, he's got a lot of good theories and principles and stuff in there that I really gelled with. So he was a uh, formative for me. <laughs> nice. I've been looking into domes and things my whole life, and lately I've been looking at ziggurats, and I'm just focusing. I have a couple of ideas of mine that are long, you know, way down the road ideas, but being able to put build a massive scale ziggurat where every floor you have the top floor is maybe where your water containment is and your water filtration using solar and everything else to desalinate and then your second floor would be your where you let's since you have some sort of a vertical farm you know mostly automated below that you would have a vertical farm but growing on the bigger levels you're going to be using things like rices wheats and soys so you're gonna need more space for that kind of thing. And Is that about like this kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. Right. But you, you know how the Saudis just came out with a desalination technology where they use domes in the desert and they just pump seawater into the dome. And the dome basically with the sun's light, it uh, con condenses the water and they collect that condensation and that's uh, the water they use. So it's uh, free of sal uh, any saline or anything else. So it's pretty exciting. Nice. I like the idea of doing that. I can show you some of my dome stuff as well. Uh, this is long. This is uh, not the full video, actually. But uh, Clint is right here. That's okay. Cool. <laughs> and I'm over here. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it's fun. You guys will come to Burning Man next year. It's going to be kind of fun. <laughs> This is my factory building dome. This is an icosahedron dome. That's sweet. And I wonder if I have, and this is the aquaponic system right here. Wow. Hold on. So basically you can see, it's, it's a bunch of tanks. This is mm -hmm. kind of like a, it, it designed it so it can kind of curl around in a circle. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just growing ornamental plants in this one. But it's uh, you know filled with the pebbles and it's a flood drain system, mm -hmm. right? So it's um, you know it's specific to that. And I've, I've become kind of I've gotten deeper into the idea of using soil, and um, 
and aquaponics. So like the aquaponic water or the fish induced water mixed with, uh, with soil that's being cultivated and kind of doing a hybrid system. And we're just gearing up to start testing that using these tanks and then having like fish tanks with vortexers. So you see, this is a, a vortex. Wow. And these are some of the different types of structures. Geodetic yeah. dome uh, version two, yeah. V1. Wow. It's so, it's, it's really, really cool to talk to you because this is the stuff that I've been thinking of my entire life since I was a little kid. Like I've designed whole homes based around domes and, and, and uh, storage structures and community spaces all using domes and things, but uh, you're on a whole other level. <clears throat> yeah, we've been geeky for a while. This is the aquaponic dome with the vertical towers in it. This nice. guy. I don't know. Oh, actually, there might be a rendering of it here. Oh, uh... I've been looking up a lot of the different dome companies around Canada and the world for quite a few number of years. And there's one company in, in Vancouver, actually, it's called West Coast Domes, I think they're called, or Pacific Coast Domes. Yeah, Pacific Domes. Yeah, Pacific Domes. And they were doing, I don't know what ever happened to them, but there was a husband and wife team, and they were really... Uh, starting to really experiment with some of the, the hydroponic and aeroponic systems inside their domes and everything. Yeah. Whatever happened to them, if they're still in business or not, but. Well, the Pacific Domes makes domes and then they just, um, then people would come in and do gardening. So yeah. I'm okay. pretty sure they did it good. This is, um, I think I did 12 towers inside of one of these 12 foot domes. Wow. So I made a, a system. I don't, I don't actually have a video of it. I have to find it somewhere. I don't know where it is. Uh, I have a, an existing aquaponic system. I can't say that I'm too excited about it because um, I've just changed my philosophy on it. This is the one I'm more into. Mm -hmm. so I have a vertical one, but then this one is like, it, it just, I think it's better, mm -hmm. um, it, but it doesn't yield as much. So you'd have to like layer this mm -hmm. going vertical if you want to get vertical with it. Yeah. And this one's kind of more ornamental as well. It's like rounded. It's more for like a, a kind of just a showcase of mm -hmm. like what you can do mm -hmm. uh but you're talking like some serious production right we want to grow food we want people to be like flourishing yeah so that would require getting a little more technical yeah i've been looking at some of the companies out there too that already have the systems and basically you would buy the system off them and and a consultant comes with the package so basically you provide the warehouse and the and the hookups and they provide the technology and then, you know, and you're not working for them. You bought the system off them kind of. Right. Thing. Cause I don't, you know, that, I'd be cautious about working for some of these bigger companies. Cause some of these companies are funded by Amazon and Google and, and you know, it's questionable. Yeah. You know, some of the stuff. So. <clears throat> All right. So these are the towers with lights on them. Wow. This is six years ago. This video. <laughs> Wow. So we would take them and put them into like the net pots. Mm -hmm. uh, the old way we used to make domes. So I make these vortexes as well. These are fun. Yeah. They, they're really good for uh, aesthetics and then they also oxygenate the water. Yeah circulation and all that sort of thing this was yeah this was a system here that i had which is basically um it's basically a, a pot with a fish tank and then it comes up uh, this vertical it doesn't really yield a lot it's more for like a house unit that we really finish still that's this is amazing yeah so that's yeah, I had other videos too, but that one's kind of the closest one that I've seen uh, in my arsenal here. Yeah, so we definitely, uh, we can assist. I guess the big question is, um, you know, like what, what kind of food system you want to start doing inside of the structure. I can easily make greenhouse structures all day. Yeah. That's, that's the thing I have to do tomorrow. And then, uh, Anything that goes inside of it is you know, going to take um, planning and time and testing and so on. 
I'm willing to start like for, for the beginning, just to be able to, to prove to you investors and everything else, a tried and true idea and everything else. It's something that's reliable. In the beginning, I want to start with just kind of like an aeroponic system. Right. But aeroponics has limited number of crops that it can grow under that current technology. So I would be totally down with integrating other systems and technologies to fulfill the meet the needs. I did work at a greenhouse here, Eurosia greenhouses in Victoria a, a while ago, and they were one of the first companies to use those coconut shell bases for their their yeah. plants, and and uh, they were using GMO bees for pollinating and black aphids to keep the green aphids away. Like they had all these things. But they were doing vegetables in, in, in large scale. And so what I would like to do eventually with Mother's Hands is to, or Arcana Systems, is I want to be able to increase my variety uh, and, and utilizing as many different current texts as I can. So I'm totally down with aquaponics because it gives you the possibility of doing prawns, trouts, like so many different, you're, you're bringing food that people, you know, uh, use all the time to the market. But yeah. also the ability to bring fruit and vegetables, leafy greens, all this stuff that normally isn't part of, because the main goal here is food security for First Nations communities, right? Yeah. Especially now with things being the way they are and, and everything else, us being able to get out from under the thumb and the heel of the government is what our main focus is. So food security, water security, resource security, those kind of things are paramount of importance and this idea is a is a potential solution for that so i'm willing to partner with anyone and any you know from what i've seen your systems are exactly what i'm talking about because i'm i'm sure you've tried growing things like peppers or zucchinis or things like that right yeah uh, peppers are easy yeah they're, they're <laughs> yeah exactly zucchinis um tomatoes all that stuff in, in that system i was showing you zucchinis work mm -hmm. really well. uh any type of squash. Yeah. You know, but but again, I'm getting I'm getting closer to this uh, making a system that's basically like eight inches of aquaponic water, yeah, eight inches of really good soil, mm. and then planting the plants in there and then going vertical with that, yeah. utilizing more of like flat four by eight beds mm. stacked. You know. You're down with like using the LED lights and all that kind of stuff. Oh uh, yeah, LED lights are great. I mean, of course. Doing a, uh, a greenhouse, you're going to be able to get a lot of light come in. You just may not be able to get enough. Yeah. So I like the kind of supplement of like the sunlight mixed with it. You know, kind of yeah. Well, it saves money. It saves time and everything else too. Because I'm down with whatever technology is going to to put out the yields, and and uh, the quicker we can grow, the the better it is for everyone. So you know, I start with one greenhouse. I want to be able to prove concept, proof of concept, right? So in the beginning, I might not, you know, I might start with a certain system because I kind of have my head set on an aeroponic system because it's the one that can handle multi-level and, uh, you know, it uses way less water and, and uh, you know, it, it does use more electricity, but it uses less water. So it's a bit of a trade-off. And with some of the fully automated systems, because one of the things like for me, I want to lessen my reliance on manpower as much as I possibly can, simply because in some of the communities we're going to be working with in remote communities, you're not going to have the same quality of, of, um, of uh, assistance in the greenhouse as you would say in Vancouver, Toronto or something. And so if you rely on, on the human factor, a lot of times in, in the situation I'm talking about, it, it, it could potentially you know, so I'm looking at automation as, as, cause that's the future anyways. Yeah. You, yeah. You, I, I would definitely take a, a strong step into automation as much as possible. Yeah. Um, to just make it, cause what happens is if you get automation and you get a specific process and you can, you know, consistently get it going, it's just going to create the same results over and over again. Yeah. That's what you want. You don't want to, you know, lose like a whole month or two of crops, uh, because of some experiment, you know, you want to get all that stuff out of the way, get a process down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, that's we, have a big farm. we have a, we have a 720 acre farm, uh, about 15 miles from here in Nevada city. Oh, wow. And, um, they we're going to be testing this new system for the next couple of years. It's going to be a pretty full on situation for testing. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to be sharing a lot of, of that information and developing a lot of new systems. 
mm -hmm. around that. So that, that's coming down the pipeline. Yeah. Maybe you guys can be a part of our, our, our program and uh, we're, we're sending you domes and like fish tank things and mm -hmm. all the kind of stuff that you would need. Because I could get uh, fish tanks and um, kind of biodigesters and water pumps and all the things that you would need to do mm -hmm. any type of uh, either aquaponic system or aeroponic system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be totally down. I'd, I'd love to see more. It's a, uh... There's a lot of potential and possibility, and I'm, I'm excited about partnerships, right? I'm excited with helping other companies who have a similar vision and a similar goal, which is just feeding the people, right? And so my focus is, that's what basically the focus is, is walking my talk insofar as doing the thing and getting it to as many people as I can, but being realistic about the market I'm in being realistic about competition and, and, and that old Machiavellian mindset when it comes to business and stuff. Right. So trying to find the balance between those two. And I think I found it. And uh, the people I've talked to so far, a lot of um, CEOs of, a, of, of business development corps and things like that have given me really positive feedback on the idea and the presentation I have thus far. So I'm pretty excited. And then there's, it creates a lot of potential down the road because aquaponics it has that unique ability to be able to provide, you know, fish or, or, you know, seafood type and, and also a good yield in, in so far as the green goes. So it's kind of a win-win in my books. Right. And so being able to build a facility where you could blend the technologies together, one section of the warehouse is aeroponics, one section is hydroponics and one section is, uh, is uh, aquaponics. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, that's a good way to start. And then, you know, figure what would be the best. There's a Japanese company, I don't know if you've seen them, that does greenhouse domes, similar to what you're talking about. But what they do is it's a centralized system. So they inside the dome, they basically have a big disc. And uh, inside the disc is rows and rows of the plants. Mm. The water is fed from the top and the things are at a slight angle. So the water runs down so that all the plants get the same amount of water. That's great. <laughs> You just have a little circle in the middle where the worker is and she just takes one out and they all slide down one. Do you know what I mean? So she just works, you know, rows and rows like that and he sends them on down the line. But you should see this thing. It's really impressive to see all the plants growing towards the center within this dome. Mm. The cycling system is underneath it all. And so out it's just the dome above you. And these plants, the way they just kind of slide down the, the rails when you take one out to harvest it, it, it just slides down. <laughs> and then when oh, you... What's the, what's the name of that company? Let's look at that. I would have to look on... Just give me half a second. And I think they're still in business too. So um, where would I have that? Just, just let me have half a second because I did save it because I thought it was so freaking cool. And so I did... Yeah, it's, it's been interesting because I've been I've been in the world of aquaponics for so long and um, I started making systems about 10 years ago for it and spent four years designing systems and then the whole business model of it got really difficult because if I'm sending aquaponics to people, you know, they have to be really into it. You know, they got to like, you know, be ready to be aquaponic farmers and most people were not. So, you know, you got to really make it as turnkey idiot proof awesome or it just won't work you know like because it's a whole new way of farming a and even if somebody has experience you know they're probably going to <laughs> they're probably going to uh have to learn a whole new thing called the gand pa dome g-a-n-d-p-a g-a-n-d-p yeah d-p-a d-p-a So when you see it, you can kind of see it's similar to like even you building those, that geodesic dome and then using that technology inside the dome and you're getting that regular consistent yield and everything else you're getting, you know, if you supplement the daylight with LEDs for nighttime, you know, kind of a deal. Does that look really cool? Like when you see it uh. working, it's just like, wow. So I put that, I have a folder on my YouTube. Of I love I this ideas that i've seen that i really liked and i thought they had potential i would save them to this video playlist that i have on youtube 
but I also downloaded TED Talks about food security, the future of vertical farming and all this kind of stuff. It's been like a lot of studies going on in the past little while. But just see how simple it is. Like, it's just, it, it, it seems like a great idea. I don't know why, I don't know if it's, you know, why it's not taken off. Huh. But again, I, again, I would point you to uh, the, the Saudis are using uh, water desalination domes. And something you could look at based on your designs and everything else, you could look at a potential solution for that, especially in the States where, uh, what's that lake that the Hoover Dam's built on, has dropped by 70% in the last 10 years. And so, and that feeds Las Vegas, LA, a bunch of other cities. So being able to come up with answers using what you're doing and coming up with new answers for things like uh, water you know, desalination and shit like that, right? So. Let's see, like this is a hydroponic operation, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do they harvest it? <laughs> well, that's it. Like she, she puts on the new ones, and then when they're ready to go, she just it comes down to the other side or something. And they just slide it down the line or something. I'm not, I haven't watched. Oh, that. that's fun. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like the idea of, of a plant going through a process. Yeah, and it's just very easy to get through. Um, <clears throat> but I'm wondering though. I'm, I'm still kind of on the fence about aquaponics even though i've created these systems because it's just so difficult to maintain mm -hmm. um, versus just getting really good soil like really good soil yeah and um and then you know inoculating it with you know aquaponic water maybe it's just like an irrigation system that's coming from a fish tank or something mm -hmm. but yeah I, I would love to see a way that we can do a turnkey vertical soil based system in a dome or a pyramid Mm. I would love to see that happen because I just feel like there's going to be more minerals and elements that get created mm. and you don't have to work so hard other than just to make sure you're making just the best soil imaginable. We're doing a soil workshop at our ranch um, in September with uh, Chris Trump. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of this guy, the, the Korean soil food uh, web dude. He's, he's basically like, he teaches the method of making um, all kinds of like, like industrial size soil stuff. Mm -hmm. um so i think it's going to be it's going to be interesting to get soil back into this technology because everybody's just raving about hydroponics and then aquaponics is like trying to come up because it's more organic mm -hmm. but you know i'm not a fan of hydroponics at all mm -hmm. like i think it's bottle ponics it's not getting the right minerals it's you're, we're forcing nature mm -hmm. i don't feel like the food is that great when i eat it mm -hmm. so yeah i want to get back to the soil Mm. Um, bring the high techness to so I don't know if anybody's done that actually. Could, I think too, like great. because and, and, and for me, I'm one of those people. I kind of I think down the road of an idea and I look at you know reverse engineering it and things like that. So one of the things I know for sure is a lot of my family is farmers. Is a, it's getting harder and find harder to find that good healthy black soil, the black dirt, and a lot of it's getting bleached out through overuse of pesticides and and uh, herbicides and, and fertilizers and everything else and um good soil you can make good soil with proper composting so maybe pairing with a good composting company or something like that you would be able to do a partnership there and be able to have a an area where your soil is you know what the term pharaoh is or uh, when the, you let something go wild for a little bit mm -hmm. yeah, yeah big spot where it's just a bunch of dirt that was trucked in but then it's being constantly turned in with compost yeah yeah you're basically you're you're inoculated. Inoculated. yeah nothing to grow on it it's just simply there to relax and get renutriated what if that's a word <laughs> uh, sure <laughs> and then turn, like you said in the systems you're talking about you'd be able to have you know supply your own black dirt rather than taking it from places because it's got to come from somewhere right yeah and taking dirt from from the forest and stuff might might cause problems too no no, no. we, we got to be making soil like yeah, if, exactly. if we're making soil consistently we're on the right path anyways mm -hmm. so um you first you, you probably want to create just a, a structure or a building or a system that's constantly making soil and then all the food comes after that mm -hmm. uh, this is our new strategy for our new farm uh right now 
Mm. But and what I like about growing it inside of a contained unit, you know, you can continue growing all year round. Mm -hmm. And um, God, if you get the right soil and you're inoculating it with the right nutrients without adding stuff, yeah. Like so this is this looks similar to one of my to my pots. Mm -hmm. So this this is you know aeroponic and hydroponic pots you can buy that go vertical. Yeah. So and they're cool, but I don't know, actually, this one looks like it can hold a little soil. Mm -hmm. See, I can make things that hold soil. Yeah. I can customize, I'm an industrial engineer, so I can go through the process of making uh, anything that we want. Mm -hmm. It's a little expensive uh, when you start getting the plastic mold injecting and things like that. So yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things. I mean, since I started doing this 10 years ago, so much stuff has come out. These are cool. These yeah. are filled with soil. It's yeah. filled with the wall. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, I, I, I believe it's like, if you're doing the, the lettuces and things, I think that's where a good aeroponics system works well. But if you want to do vegetables, they need those nutrients in the vegetables. They're not going to get that from aeroponics or hydroponics. I think what you're saying is exactly right. You have to kind of find a blend between the two. But yeah. If you use that soil base. You can control the nutrient feed in the plant. So I, I totally get that idea you know and like i said i'd be totally down with using whatever technologies are going to achieve the goal in the end you know and, and different facilities having different technologies uh inside I'm, I'm totally down with that i never wanted to stick with just one i only looked at aeroponics simply because of of the yields like you're looking at I think it's two to three yields a year at around, you know, and if you're growing the right product and you've done your, your homework and so far as who you're selling it to, you know, you're, you're looking at yields that are pretty impressive, you know, like uh, $50,000 every three months or, you know, or more as, as far as what you're putting out of your greenhouse. And, and uh, you know, that's three, four times a year. That's great. Whereas traditional farming, 2D farming, you're looking at one crop, maybe oh. you're lucky. Oh, this is great. So this is my system. I just Googled my, the name of my system. And there it is. It's funny. Let's see if it what pops up. Ah, there we go. So here's a system I made. Uh, I designed in SketchUp about 10 years ago. So it's basically uh, you know, biofiltration system with fish tanks with uh, a bio uh, uh, the gasser, and then these are the towers. Wow. So I've done a lot of This is the soil-based system? This one could be a little soil-based because it's got, see how it's open? This could all be soil. Mm -hmm. But no, this is more, you know, water overflowing and falling down. So uh, this would be more of an aquaponic system. So it might be nice to like utilize the same water flow system with, mm -hmm. with soil, you know? Yeah. So now last one you just showed, that's that's pretty much exactly what I'm looking at doing, right? Nice. Yeah, simple, it's simple right. structures. Cause you know, I don't want all my money to go straight into building a big, you know, one, $2 million big warehouse with concrete and steel and all the traditional kind of crap. And then, uh, you know, you're going to end up having to pay that one back for free years. And that comes out of your, you know, so I'd rather work with something that's a little bit more easier to take up or, you know, set up and, and put on areas that don't have, I mean, the reason they don't have a lot of stuff in the North is because you can't build concrete pads in the Arctic. You just can't. If you try to put a concrete pad a lot in, in the in tundra zone, it's going to sink. It'll crack and sink and you'll lose your building, <laughs> you know? So like, being able to have some a lighter structure, being able to have something that can handle a little stress and 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 whatnot. Yeah. So this is a video. Oh. <laughs> well, that's our system. This is the system I made. It's on somebody's. Oh, it's a video. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we made this uh, this pot system. It's a little too small, so I would make it a little bigger so they can accommodate soil. We did plastic mold injection. We made three parts. Wow. 
Yeah, and that's exactly, yeah. Because I mean, imagine being able to take investors through my warehouse and show them like rows and rows of these green and growing things and different systems and things like that. And, and the wide variety of food, you know, vegetables and whatnot that I can put out. I want that to kind of be the wow factor in, in if, if I ever had an investor walkthrough or something like that, you know what I mean? And so utilizing as many techs as I can, that's, you know. That's funny. Uh, it's funny that this video is here. I haven't even seen this video. <laughs> Sending it to both of you guys. This is my creative director. So he, uh, he posted it a while back. It's a good one. We, we have these all day too. I could send you guys these. Um, these uh, aquaponic situations. Uh, like I could send you a full vertical system. Sorry, I just I'm actually just I'm like so tired. So I'm gonna be in the tonight with my girlfriend. Okay. So I need that upstairs though. I'm just gonna grab it. Okay. I can if this week or even tomorrow like I can take them back. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't look like anything. Yeah. But my bag's upstairs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I just didn't know if people were. No, I think it's empty. Hold on, guys. Hold on for one second. Yep. My my video is just like random. Oh, you're on a video. Oh yeah, we're on a video too. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that I was on video. I was about to say something, but. <clears throat> Doing that, but if we uh, sorry guys, no, no, uh, sorry, sorry. Board game. <laughs> so, Casey, I think we're wrapping things up right now. Um, yes. and just want to think about maybe a little bit about next step or something. I know James is in the position of he's, he's got a presentation in two weeks, he's in a business plan course at the University of Victoria that does have access to uh, First Nations funding. and there's a lot of support for him up there around what he has. Um, I think James just needs support in terms of what you have, sort of technical expertise in terms of, you know, what, what are some of the missing pieces for his presentation mm. in terms of maybe, maybe a bit in the numbers or maybe a bit in construction costs or something like that. But I'm just mm. wondering if we could have another me meeting um, and maybe dive into that a bit. Is that yeah, sounds a possibility? Good. I'd like that. Yeah. And I could probably send you guys a lot of um, visuals of like greenhouses and things because like that's the most immediate and easy thing that I can do is like to manufacture greenhouses. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as like the internal stuff, I can make a lot of the parts for it, but I don't really know. It depends on what you know you want to do inside. So you yeah. should let me know. Like, so yeah. let's let's just like on one end of things, I see us kind of a dual thing here because. The greenhouses, the domes, that's, I prefer domes over squares any day when it mm -hmm. comes to what I'm talking about. Okay. So, so definitely interested in that um, question though, it just as a side question, have you built any of these domes in like Northern communities where it's 40 below, 50 below, that kind of thing? Did they handle that? No, but, but um, there was a greenhouse. So I made an aquaponic system for this group in um, Alberta. Mm. And they built just a regular polycarbonate hoop house over it. And then they put uh, radiant heating and it's just, it's great. So yeah, yeah, polycarbonate yeah. holds and retains the heat really well. Yeah. And um, you just got to make sure that you have a good heating source that's affordable, preferably radiant heating from the sun. Mm. And um, so, yeah, but other than that, no, I, there has been much in, in those cold regions. Mm. I also have a way that... Um, I can make a really highly insulative dome. Mm. It'd be a double dome. Yep. So it's, it's basically two domes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I can make panels that can reach, you know, that will be R60. Nice. Yeah, so yeah, if, yeah. You, if you need a highly insulative structure, yeah, that's yeah. a dome, a pyramid, or a square, I can do it. Anyway, that's anyway, I'm really excited to, to work with you in the future. I think we're going to be able to find some ways to kind of forge a path ahead where it's mutually beneficial. And I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. And I'm really thankful again for you taking the time. And, and I, I'm really, 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 really blessed to be able to talk to you. So thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be of service. It's my deep desire to get 
as many um, First Nations people like fed well and give them new industries. In America, it's, it's horrible. It's, it's a whole thing. You know, so we're doing a lot of stuff with uh, Standing Rock. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing stuff with local natives here. Mm -hmm. And um, we also are working with the pipes. To You're build in Alberta? No, I'm in California. California, okay. Where I like, cause I've been to Humboldt County, I've been to Berkeley, I've been kind of all over California. So, yeah, yeah. No, I'm in Nevada City. Oh. So, like right here in Lake Tahoe, about an hour from Tahoe. Nice. About an, hour, an hour above Sacramento. It's great here. Yeah, it's like forests and awesome mm. people. So, it, it's a good, it's my, my home. It's where we're building, a, we have a housing development. This map you see here on the wall. Yeah. Um, we're going to be building probably around 100 plus houses. Wow. Um, that are going to be hybrid farmhouses. So, house plus farm attached to it. Wow. So, as, as we're, we're gearing awesome. up for that, like testing process, getting yeah. deep into it. So uh, timing for another meeting? Do you want to schedule it now? Whatever works, I'll go around your schedule, Casey, because Tuesdays and Thursdays and Sundays are no good for me. But outside of that, I'm, I'm fairly open. My course only runs for two more weeks, and then I'm, I'm done that. So We could attempt to do it this time next week, as okay. again, on Monday, Monday morning. And I think you have a lot. When are you presenting? to? Uh... Uh, I present on the 24th. Okay. Or 22nd, I have to double check. I think it's because they're scheduling and they haven't been sent when my meeting slot is, but it's somewhere between the 22nd and 24th. Okay. But I, like, I don't, there's no pressure on this. I don't have to have all this. This thing like I'm waiting to the last minute here. It's just, I'm trying to get ideas of, of who I can work with and how to do things. And if nice. it takes me a year from now to get going, it takes me a year from now. So there's no pressure on me for that. Do you have financials for the farm? For growing like what and how much that's part of the problem is is i'm looking into companies that have technologies and getting quotes from them so that i can add that to my my value proposal and all that kind of stuff so i get an idea how much they would charge me for the system i have to also include utilities and the warehouse in that that cost structure and so i'm just kind of like looking at what options work and and everything else so yeah and i have funding like uh, access to a lot of funding through in Canada is a little bit you know uh, a little different than the states insofar as um, a little a little bit more help for indigenous people in Canada than the states so there is some first nations funding provincially federally privately uh, there's a lot of grants and uh, things that I can write so getting grant proposals going getting my business plan done and so that's kind of all the stuff that I've been working on in the past little while, trying to build up to get me to the place where I can start doing these proposals and, and start getting cash funneled to where I need it, right? So Nice. Well, I definitely have some financials I could send to you based on vertical towers, and you could change the numbers around to what system it's That's perfect. I would really, really be interested in talking more about that because that's one of my weaknesses is math. It just is. It's a learning disability for me, so I haven't focused as much on the accounting end of things yet. I know that's what the big wigs want to see most of, so <laughs> definitely could use. Oh, cool. well, this is a it's an Excel spreadsheet. It's not too hard to navigate. It's yeah, like a calculator. So, and then would they tried to teach us the Excel Excel spreadsheet and stuff, but I was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have an accounting department. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know. I mean, unless people are just like giving money out, they want to see like deep financials and how it yeah. works. I mean, yeah, exactly. It's, it's kind of a part of it, you know? It's, yeah. It's yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's why I'm glad to be able to talk to you who actually knows those things because so far a lot of people are, are in different areas of this and don't necessarily know that, you know, and so I'm really excited about that. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Elijah, for making the meeting happen. You're welcome. It's uh, great to see uh, when two things connect in a great way. So much thanks to our brother, Clint Carlton, for uh, seeing that when I talked to him. So yeah, definitely. Let's great. Well, I look forward to our next meeting. So, awesome. we're, so just to say Monday at two o'clock next week, is that? Yeah, maybe, maybe we push it to three, just in case. Okay. Three o'clock. <laughs> It'll work better, yeah. For sure. Okay. Thanks, Casey. All right, guys. And, uh, Thank you so much. So, see you guys later.